Now to our special report, Climate Crisis Saving Tomorrow. Tonight we're taking you thousands of miles away to one of Earth's most extreme places, Antarctica. Like much of the planet, this pristine wonderland is changing. And our own Amy Robot got the incredible assignment going to see what's happening with her own eyes. And the journey to get there wasn't easy. Our epic journey to Antarctica is underway. A 12-hour flight straight south to Ushuaia, Argentina, the southernmost city on the planet. From there, our 15-member broadcast team boards the National Geographic Endurance, a ship built for polar exploration. The record low at the South Pole, minus 78 degrees. Lucky for us, it's springtime there now, but excursions to the glacier mean exposure to the elements. So I made it to Miami Beach, where I've got a lot of warm clothes. I've got my heavy jackets, my hats, my gloves, my boots. We are headed south, way south, and we are ready for the cold. The first 24 hours, crossing the Drake Passage, widely considered the roughest, most punishing seas on the planet. We would like to be the first to welcome you to Ushuaia. The world's most southern city to board the National Geographic Endurance with Lindblad Expeditions, our floating home for the next two weeks. Here we are pushing off the coast of Argentina. We have 500 nautical miles ahead of us and some pretty rough seas before we finally reach the bottom of the earth. We are now crossing Drake Passage, a place in the water where the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean meet. The currents of each ocean crashing into each other, causing swells and wind speeds at hurricane force, average depths of 11,000 feet. 30 foot waves are not uncommon. There aren't any land masses to slow down the strength of these waves, and these photos prove it. Taken on an earlier Lindblad expedition voyage, they show the power of the Drake Passage as waves crash over the bow. See which way the breakfast goes for you tomorrow. <laughs> Expeditions like this one are put together by Sven Lindblad. His father, Lars Erik Lindblad, led the first group of people who were not trained expeditioners, many of them women, to Antarctica back in 1966. Now, these expeditions highlighting the danger climate change poses to Antarctica and the rest of the world. We're at a tipping point. If we don't change our behavior real fast... What happens in Antarctica affects not, the entire world. ...does not stay in Antarctica. In just a few short hours, we'll finally make our first landfall on the South Shetland Islands, just miles from Antarctica. Chinstrap penguins, the island group's ambassadors. <laughs> threatened by climate change. In some areas, their population may have fallen by half. But how we get from ship to shore is its own adventure. Enter the Zodiacs. These small inflatable vessels will shepherd us through the icy waters and onto land. And as we cross the Drake Passage, we travel with one passenger who is an Antarctic legend. 30 years ago, Will Steger led a 3,471 mile expedition across the continent on dog sleds a seven-month trek across the ice. It took us 30 days to cross these ice shelves. And, uh, and also, in the last 30 years, a number of other ice shelves have broken up. Now, Steger is returning to Antarctica with two young filmmakers who have made a documentary about his life. I grew up tearing out pictures of National Geographic with Will Steger's expeditions. But it's clear that times have changed as a warming climate has impacted the continent, making a similar journey for Steger impossible. 300 miles of it is now gone. These remote areas are really interconnected to the rest of the world. So we should know that, you know, it's real, but, uh, you know, we really have to come together here for solutions and adaptations. Well, you know, I've covered a lot of hurricanes, so I think it's fairly safe to say these are hurricane force gusts. Antarctic weather is living up to its reputation. The captain shut down the outer decks for everyone's safety, rerouting on the fly. Charting a new course south, sailing toward Peterman Island overnight, hoping to outrun the storm. But along the way, the sun came out and so did some of Antarctica's most famous residents at Bailey Head on Deception Island. All right, we're laughing. The snow is really starting to come down hard here now. Doug, our resident penguin expert, is telling me there are as many as 6,000 penguins right now on this island. So, Doug, this is uh, exciting to be here, to get here and witness all of this, but it's very important. How are these birds, how are these penguins 
affected by climate change? Yeah, that's a great question, Amy. And they are indeed. And we're, the location we're at today is exemplary of, of the impacts that here in the Antarctic Peninsula we're feeling from climate change. Warming temperatures have made the habitat more suitable for these penguins here, the Gen 2 penguins, and less suitable for the former occupants, the Adeli penguins that were here. You said thousands of penguins are here of Gen 2 penguins. Um, there's just a couple hundred of the Adelie penguins left. So it's been a real dynamic shift in this part of the Antarctic Peninsula where the temperatures have changed so dramatically over the last few decades. An alarming reality. This ice is melting. Temperatures here are rising faster than anywhere else in the world. The sea ice has been reduced by 30% in the last century. We've seen areas that used to be frozen that are now melted. And we've seen areas that used to be covered with snow pretty consistently year after year that are now just dark soil. It's amazing that this is happening in such a short amount of time. And so let's bring in Amy Robach all the way from Antarctica. Amy, you finally made the journey. I know you're freezing, but you're always high energy. I can't believe I'm even talking to somebody in Antarctica. It's gotta be crazy for you to be there. Just take us through what struck you the most so far. It is. Oh, the extremes. The weather here is unpredictable. It's extreme, and we're experiencing it right now. So when we first set out on our journey, pretty quickly, we had hurricane force winds. We had 18 to 30 foot swells from the Southern Ocean. So our captain rerouted us in search of better weather. And here we are in tropical storm force winds with uh, sleet and snow pounding us. And if you could just see this incredible field of sheet ice that we are carving our way through to make it to the mainland of Antarctica, it is breathtaking. It is beautiful, and Trevor, it's our responsibility to keep it like it is right now. Of course, and I don't want to keep you out in those tropical force winds and sleet too long, Amy, but we're loving your reporting. Where else are you headed? What else can we expect? That's right. So we are heading to the main continent where we're hoping to meet more animal life. We had the penguins for you today, but there are so many other beautiful Antarctic creatures that we're hoping to encounter. Also, uh, they have convinced me, I think, to go snorkeling uh, in these icy waters because apparently it's incredible. Um, I'm going to be in a dry suit and I'm going to have to muster up though quite a bit of courage and confidence to do it because it probably wouldn't normally be my jam to... Uh, to go go snorkeling in these icy waters. Yeah, given the temperature, Amy, I think you want to double or triple up on the wetsuits. Amy Robach braving the cold in the <laughs> elements for us exactly. in Antarctica. Amy, so much. Uh, thank you. Go get warm. Yeah. You can catch much more climate reporting on our ABC News Live climate special, Adapt or Die, anchored by Lindsay Davis. It airs tonight right here after Prime. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.